Let's clean a filter. Intake on the Mark V R32. This is my old window filter setup, so it's a little bit like ratty inside. It's not really that like good quality foam, but I do have a new one that I put on over there during the summertime because it's a lot fresh and I don't want to deal with um, all the salt and debris and nastiness during the wintertime, so I just chucked that one off for the wintertime. But it's beautiful out now. And it's time to get some nice fresh air. All right, so back to it. Um, just got a couple hose clamps to take off. I also have a special one I'm gonna show. I'm gonna replace all these right, well, these three right now. Is uh, these are two by phase two motor trend. They're just fancy hose clamps. I lost one on this side, so I just decided to get it from them. So it looks a little bit nicer than these. Apparently clamped down a lot better, but I mean, it's just an intake, so it's mainly for looks, especially for the VR, just get a nice noise and barely some, some performance. But uh, yeah, got tools here. Might have to take the scoop off, maybe sneak it out. But uh, I got a seven mil socket right there. And it's, I think, a six, a five, five mil uh, Allen for that clamp. But yeah, I'm gonna hop to it. Bad filter or the winter filter, I have to call it. It's a little bit shot in there, so the foam flat's deteriorating. And this is my nice new one. It's a brand new one from Forge itself. It's super clean, ready to go back in. And I also got a new carbon fiber barrel section from them. So yeah, let's screw it on. These nice screws and washers from hardware store. It gives it a nice flush look. But I do plan on changing the screws out because they don't look as nice and they like to strip a lot. But we'll do that in the future. I'm just gonna line these up, put them down, and we're good to go. This filter's always been Already, uh, already been cleaned thoroughly and re-oiled. This is a foam style filter. So you have to be on top of it, maintenance wise. And it's also oiled. So you definitely have to be on top of them. There you go, just ready to go back in now. I guess, wow, <clears throat> I have the new one already ready to 
go. I'm gonna take a look at the old one. Got the intake used. So this is the filter that it came with. As I mentioned before, I just used it as for the winter time. But it's probably another one of these or buy another one of these somewhere and uh, toss this in because this one is done so yeah this is the negative drawback of like foam cleaning filters <laughs> well foam filters they're not as durable as like your typical like cotton or gauze from like K&M uh, these have like a certain lifespan well they do well with like sucking in air but they don't last that long so definitely degrade damn i don't want to touch bugs in here but they definitely do degrade sooner and you definitely want to check them out like sooner so they don't turn to that you want to keep yours as fresh as this one so if you do have a new one make sure you keep on top of it for maintenance and always clean it I'd say I typically clean this one last summer, uh, I want to say or the summer, but from spring to summer around like five times, or around like after every two oil changes, just clean it. It's not that hard. Make sure you let these things dry really well. I'll show you the process of cleaning it on this one since this one's going to be junky anyways, but you'll get the same process. All right, so now we're back on the hood. I'm going to get ready to... Toss on the new filter. It's ready to go. Make sure you put it in the correct end. So this is the back side of the base of the cone. So that means there you go. You kind of see it in there. That's the way that faces outwards. Tells them this way. But yeah, you're gonna get that ready. But I just wanted to show off these clamps from Phase Two Motor Trend. I already have one of them on. This one right here, look a lot nicer and better than your typical hose clamps. Only got three just because these three and this one right here. Well, the ones to fit, they don't sell a bigger diameter past, I believe, four inches. And on these, these are uh, three and a quarter. So for these three, these are the only ones I'll be able to put. I only bought them. And the fact that I lost a hose clamp one time and had to find something in the meantime. So I decided to try these out and give them a shot. They look really nice. They uh, hold on pretty well. Uh, actually, let's pop one open. Did it come with stickers? No, it didn't. <laughs> yeah. These are the clamps. They got an Allen. Or a hex there. Let's pull it around. These are three and a quarter. If you ever want to get these for uh, your Mark V R with the forge intake, has to be with this forge intake. The stock intake has uh, your like typical squeeze clamp hoses. Uh, squeeze clamp <clears throat> or like typical like radiator hoses. That you have to grab by so like pinch and squeeze. The very annoying ones, but yeah, these make it a lot better and they look a lot nicer too. So, probably clean up the engine bay a little bit. Now, I'm going to take the rest of the intake off. New clamps. I'm hoping they fit because they're a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker this way. So hopefully they fit behind. 
you do have a forged intake on a Mark 5R, you already broke, if you don't have a metal scoop, if you already broke your plastic scoop, it's because the combi valve down there pushes the intake upwards and the intake upwards hits your hood, hits the top of your hood as you hit bumps and all that, and then you break the intake scoop, which is most likely plastic for the uh, later models that they made. But yeah, that's how it looks like with it on so far. Slap her back in. All right, well, to further diagnosis, I have concluded the battle. Uh, definitely isn't going to fit. Combi valve is in the way, so it's kind of just smacking into it on the bottom side. So, until I do get it deleted because my car is tuned, then I'll slap it on. But for now, I'll just slap on the other two. Oh, well, cool, and then lame one right next to each other, I guess. Damn, wish it was that simple with the other one. Note the direction, it's upside down for the board setup, it's right side up on the stock setup, but yeah, note that the air flow is up. Crazy tight on that one. At tossing this back together. Kinda wanna get this painted or like painted clear coated so it looks a lot shinier. It's probably something to throw in the ideal list. But yeah. I'm breathing in fresh air now. At least two out of the three fit.
definitely make a follow-up video. I'm gonna delete that condo out. That's it. That's typically the process when things fit. Get the finishing result. Nice little clamps right there. It's a major one. But uh, yeah. This is a uh, early stage forge intake because I got the metal scoop. Early classic ones again. They always like to break because they bang against the hood. Because of the combi valve right there. It's being pushed up. Right there on the left side. That section's slightly tilted upwards and then causes the whole thing to slightly tilt upwards to bang against the hood and then break your classic scoop. Luckily for me that won't happen, but that's something to be aware of if you ever get a forge intake. It's a good sounding intake. Like I said, it only does so much for an NA VR. But yeah, good sounding, good looking, definitely recommend it. If you can find it used, it'd be better since you'll most likely get the metal scoop. If you get it on a new forge intake, you'll get the plastic scoop. So definitely be aware with that problem on the combi valve. But yeah, this is the final results. Let me cut some clips later. Alright. So that's the install process of this. Now we're gonna cut to the cleaning process of a foam filter. This happens to partake most foam filter cleanings. Mainly just follow the directions from what cleaners you get, but um, this is just overall the same process, more or less. A bunch of cleaners have like the same process, but I'd recommend also following the direct directions that they have on there. Sometimes they use cold water, sometimes they use hot water. Sometimes they recommend you to just spray and just blast water through. Sometimes they recommend you to massage it on. They have different versions, so whatever version you get, follow directions. This is just a general guide. All right, so I'm outside-ish, outside the garage, so debris doesn't fly around inside the garage. So fortunate enough to have the compressed air. If you don't, try to like find a small spray, a uh, small compressed air can, like in uh, Staples or Walmart or anything. You know, the ones usually for like PCs, cleaners, those are pretty good. So I just want to gently. I mean, in this case, this one's destroyed, but gently blow from the inside outwards. And then gently from the outside, just blow off any extra debris. So for today's cleaning, using Racing Lines cleaning kit, comes with their spray cleaner and oil spray. Ow. And their steps for instructions is to use warm water and run it through the filter, again from the inside out, so it also pushes out all the debris. Uh, I don't want to try to run any brushes or anything off it, just by hand, put gloves on by hand and get all like the debris that you can with your fingers. Try not to use a brush, if it's like very old, it'll definitely come out in pieces like that if you use a brush, or even a light bristled brush. I advise not to use a brush, just cause you don't want that happening. So just with your hands, just kinda get all the dirt off and some of the things that are stuck on there, as you can see. And then we're going to run warm water through here and also spray the cleaner. Let it sit on there, massage it, agitate it a little bit with your hand, and run it through warm water. All right, so I went inside my house, used warm water. Obviously, it's it, this is toast, so this is for example purposes. But yeah, run warm water through the inside, spray it liberally with that spray, the white cap on. 
Spray it liberally, massage it with your hands. Just get it nice there, agitated, put it down. Don't use too much water. Don't douse it so much because it's glued onto there. You don't want to damage or weaken the glue that's used to hold the foam to the metal cone that's inside there. But yeah, massage it in there nice and nice. Rinse it through from the inside again. Let it dry. I want to say let it dry. In the instructions it says 24 hours, 48 hours, let it dry. I did it on the good one and over did it overnight. Next morning I put the intake on, it was clean. So yeah, let it dry thoroughly overnight. Make sure it's actually really, really, really dry before you go on to the next step and spray on the oil. I'm not gonna do it in this sense because again, this is toast. So alright, so per instructions from Racing Line, uh, they recommend you know getting it nice and dry and from an inch away or so, just spray the whole cone. And uh, once it's like saturated a little bit, massage it with your hands. Use uh, wear gloves just for chemical reasons, but wear gloves as you massage the oil in. Make sure it's all over and then let it dry again. Dry for 30 minutes after applying it and then she'll be good to go. Also, this is a good reference. If your foam, cone, if your foam filter it looks like this, it's time to let it go, buddy. So uh, yeah, this is the quick install and also cleaning process of this definitely with foam uh, intakes they they don't last that long honestly especially if they're neglected this one was neglected when I bought it obviously I swapped it for a new one right away but when they're neglected they turn to this and you definitely don't want your car sucking in that or the raw air from the outside catching all the bugs and debris and then if it ruins your math it's gonna ruin your idle and you're gonna have problems so Definitely. Oh, and also, when spraying the uh, filter cleaning oil onto this on a brand new one, make sure you also let it dry thoroughly. Make sure you dry thoroughly because if you add too much oil to it, it also can uh, damage your mass airflow sensor on your car. So be wary of that. So yeah, that's the install process more or less for these. It's pretty simple. Well, replacement for the air filter section of your forge intake. It's pretty simple. Uh, definitely recommend if your foam cone is toast to replace it. Don't even try cleaning it because it'll most likely turn into uh, this. Don't want that. So just get a new one. It's way better. It might be a little expensive, but hey, at least your car is not going to suck in all the dust from the real world. And your car is going to be breathing a lot more happier. So definitely recommend getting a new filter if it's toast. If not, definitely keep up with maintenance wise of constantly just cleaning that. I think through the company that I'm using, which is Racing Line for the sprays, it's every 10,000 miles they recommend you clean them. So that's like a reference point you could use yourself. Maybe other companies use different ones. Again, recite back to their instructions. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely just recommend getting a new one because phone cones don't last that long. But yeah, thanks for watching. Get out there and do the damn thing.